beautiful. What you're gonna do from there is you're just gonna try to lift the block up and overhead, keeping the shape and then let it come right back down and then straighten out. And we're really just trying to make sure that the elbows stay parallel to one another and you keep them in, everything's engaged. You might be like, what's going on? One of my favorite teachers loves to do this, but it's really good to help with like the shoulder stabilization and placement of your shoulders. Cool. And today, a lot of class will be focused on fall-like things. So we're gonna open up the shoulders a lot because the organ associated with fall is your lungs and keep going. I'll keep talking. Um, and so if we open up our shoulders, we open up our collarbones, we open up our chest to create more space for our lungs to breathe. So we like that a lot. Cool, take two more and notice how you're like, why do I feel something in my bicep from doing this? Yes, I have the same thoughts. Try to keep your feet and legs not locked. And after you've done your two, you can either throw or place that block down and then roll your shoulders out, shake it out, do whatever you want, any sort of dance. And then you'll come up to the front of your mat and find your feet as wide as your mat. Cool. From there, find a light bend or a short, a small bend in your feet. And then you're just going to lift your arms up, interlace your hands above you, press them to the ceiling. And then we're going to take really big circles around our upper body. So you're going to start by rounding your spine down, kind of like the cat of a cat cow. And then you're going to spin open to the right, opening up the left side, arch your back, cow of cat cow, spin over to the left and then come back to center. So just keep going like this, really opening up all parts of the body, releasing what just happened with the shoulders, letting it all just fall around you. Let's see how many times I can make a fall pun today. I don't have any prepared, so they will truly be, it's like stand-up comedy, but yoga. Okay, so take one more to the right and then we'll come back to center and then lift up and then just switch which fingertip is on top. Press that up to the ceiling, same thing, round your spine and then take circles to the left this time. So we're spinning in both directions, clockwise and counterclockwise. Clockwise is the spin of time more of like the business side, the paternal side of your body, counterclockwise, more of like your feelings, the left, the maternal side. So we like to engage both and keep moving through both, finding a balance. Take one more to the left and then you'll meet back up in center, lift up super tall, press down through all corners of your feet, and then just let your arms drop, take a shoulder roll backwards, take a shoulder roll forwards, shake it out again. And then starting with the crown of your head, you're gonna find a slight bend in your knees and roll yourself down. Cool. From there, we're in this like really nice wide legged forward fold for our first forward fold of class. So just take some sway side to side, shake out your head, feel free to roll your shoulders again, take any movement that feels good on this forward fold. Great. Take one more breath, move things around, take any emotion that you want. And then we'll come to stillness with your fingertips, your left fingertips underneath your face. And if you have one of your blocks nearby, feel free to place the block there instead and then place your fingertips on top of your block. But if you don't, you can place them on the ground. From there, you're gonna bring your right hand to your lower back. Keeping a slight bend in both knees, twist your chest up to the right and lift your right arm up and then swim it back down, replace your left hand with your right. Take your left hand to your lower back, let your elbow shoot up towards the sky, spin just your torso to the left, lift up your left arm and then swim it back down. And so we're just taking some wide-legged swims 
as you keep going, you can make the part of stopping on your low back a little bit more fluid and kind of skip it. But we like to do that to make sure that our hips are square. Imagine that you're sticking your butt into a wall behind you. If you're near a wall, feel free to move and do that. We'll take these for a, a little bit more. Once again, opening up the shoulders, opening up the chest, creating space for the lungs, listening to your breath, inhaling up and exhaling it down. In Chinese medicine, they like thinking of an inhale as a little bit of growth and an exhale as a little bit of just letting it, for lack of a better word, die. So you're letting out a little bit of something that you just don't need anymore that's not serving you as you exhale. Take one more to each side. And then you'll meet back in your forward fold. Let your head drop, just shake it all out. You're gonna find your hands coming down to the ground, bend your knees, and then walk yourself back to a downward facing dog. From here, you'll pedal it out, take any movement that you want. I recommend taking a swim with your arm just to really keep more space in the shoulders. Take one more breath in your down dog, do whatever you want, and then bring yourself forward and through to a plank pose. So now we're in our plank, we're gonna hold it for just a second. And then how we're gonna get down to our bellies, you're gonna place your knees down, you're gonna bend your elbows in towards your chest, just like we were doing with the block. Bring your chest down, then touch your chin down, and then roll your body through to a little baby cobra. So my elbows are still pressing in towards my torso. My tops of my toes are pressing down towards the ground. I have a slight back bend. I'm looking down and out. And then exhale, lower it all the way down to the ground. Feel free to make a palm pillow with your hands underneath your forehead and sway your hips from side to side. So you might already feel a little bit of heat. Just listen to your breath really noticing and focusing on your lungs today and your breathing. Cool. And then place your hands back underneath your shoulders and press yourself back to a wide knee child's pose. So knees are as wide as the mat, big toes touching, let your arms come out. Take a beat here, find yourself. And then bend your elbows. So bend your forearms and your hands back to come towards your neck and place them in prayer at the base of your neck, walking your elbows a little bit more forward, stretching out the triceps, and just breathe here in this child's pose variation. Cool. Listen to your breath. Notice how your shoulders feel. Notice what this feels like in your arms really letting everything connect, your mind, body, and breath. In fall as well, the element that's associated with fall is metal. And we like to think of metal as the basis of like all things that are communicating with one another and allowing us to transmit things from one thing to another. If we think about it in the concept of electrical engineering, my favorite thing, all wires are made of some sort of metal that conduct that allow us to have internet, have TV, have all of this information transmit from one place to another. So as we breathe with our lungs, really think about how you can feel your breath transmit throughout your entire body, communicating with all parts of it, listening to what your body is telling you. Cool. So I hope our breath has slowed down a little bit here. You're gonna let your arms come back out to a normal child's pose and then come up to all fours. Great. From your all fours, you're gonna come up onto your fingertips. You could even use blocks if you wanted to here. I'm gonna stay on fingertips, but if you wanted to come up on blocks instead, by all means, 
you can come up onto fingertips or blocks and then walk your hands out about a palm print in front of where they are on either thing so that you're at kind of an angle. So your shoulders aren't right on top of your wrists. They're a little bit in front, but your hips are still on top of your knees. And then you're just gonna take any movement that you want around your spine. So yes, we'll see a little bit of like a cat-cow variation, but feel free to take anything that just feels good to open up your side body, open up your spine, open up your back, your neck. Feel free to circle your head around. Still keeping the tops of the feet pressing down. Take movement in all different directions. Coming up on blocks or fingertips just gives you a little bit more space to move things around. Cool. Take these for five, four, three, two, and one. And then you'll move your blocks off. I recommend having one in like the middle-ish of your mat just because we'll use it again soon. And then find your hands right underneath your shoulders. So find your perfect tabletop, gaze out and down. And then you're gonna just lift up your right knee and then place it on your calf. And we're gonna do this calf massage thing with our knee that we've done before. So just opening up our muscles. My calves have been super tight recently. Don't know about you. But you're, let your knee take circles up and down your calf all the way down to the Achilles and your heel and all the way back up behind the knee. Cool. Keeping your shoulders away from the ears. You can close your eyes here if that feels nice. A few more breaths. Great. And then you can let that right chin come back down and we'll come to the other side, lifting up your left knee and then massaging the back of the right calf. So just getting into these different body parts that we sometimes forget about, thinking about how everything is all interconnected. The figurative metal of our muscles that we have in our body are all connected in some way. So just different ways to use your imagination to think about things. One more breath, circling around. And then let your left shin come down to the ground. And then you're gonna replace your hands with your elbows. So we're coming down onto our forearms. Your hips are still over your knees. And we're gonna take a little side stretch. So you can either tuck your left toes or keep them on the ground, whatever feels nicer here, but tuck the right toes and straighten your right leg out straighten your right arm out, come onto your fingertips, and then using the leverage of your left foot, just bring yourself under your right side. So you can take this in any way that feels good, just opening up the right side body, but keep the integrity of where your left shoulder and left forearm are. So move this around, see if you can walk your fingertips over to the left, one more breath. And then bring your right forearm down onto the ground, other side. Tucking the left toes, straightening it out. Fingertips on the left side, walk them out in front of you and then spin open to the left. Cool. Feel free to kickstand your right knee out if you need more space. Chin can go anywhere it feels comfortable. Shoulder, right shoulder away from the ear, lifting yourself up. And then come back to center on your exhale. From here, you're gonna tuck both toes and then straighten them out coming into a forearm plank. So we won't be here that long. Strongly press down through your forearms and the palms of your hands. Shoulders away from the ears. One more breath. And on your next exhale, place your right hand down, place your left hand down, come into your plank, push up prep, and then bend the knees, stick the butt up, downward facing dog. Cool, pedal it out one more time. We've been here before. Take a little bit less time with the movement, but feel free to shake it out. And then find 
your invisibly movement down dog. So you're feeling the energy moving through you, but no one on the outside can see it. Slight bend in the knees, arms wrap in towards your heart. Bend the knees, stick the butt up. And then begin to walk your hands back towards your feet, coming into a forward fold at the back of the mat. From here, measure out two fist distance in between your arches to find that hip width. But if you loved the wide legged forward fold we did in the beginning, feel free to make your feet as wide as the mat. It doesn't, whatever feels good for you. And then let your head drop, hang over. Interlace your hands at the base of your spine and then let your, shoulder, your hands come over your head, opening up the shoulders again. Finding that connection, the belly with the thighs, bend your knees more, relax your head. Imagine that the crown of your head is a magnet to the ground and it's pulling it down. Two more breaths. Let the crown of your head fall to the ground. Oh, oh. And then bring your hands back to the low back. Let your arms drape down and then begin to slowly roll yourself up to stand, head is last to lift. Joint by joint, bone by bone, stacking yourself up like a tower. And then once you get to the top, once again, just shake it out, take any movement that feels good. Cool. And then grab for one of your blocks, wherever they are. And what you're gonna do is place your block on the ground in front of you on, it could be on, on the lowest height, either sideways or vertically. And then you're gonna step the left ball of the foot on top of it. And then just imagine you're, I don't know what that is, just press down on it. I haven't driven a car in a long time, so I don't know if this is a car analogy I can make. From there, do whatever you need to like get it on the right spot. Step back on your right foot a little bit more and then add, place your hands on your waist and then bend your knees, bend yourself over. You can have a slight bend in both knees and this will just help get a bigger opening in the calves. Hands can come down onto the block. Gaze can be down and out, or you can let your head totally relax. Just notice what your spine is doing and keep breathing. You can rock forward and back like I'm doing just to keep a little bit more dynamic in the movement. And take this for two more breaths. Great. And then place your hands on your hips, lift yourself back up, let that go, move it around with your feet or your hands, place the top of the right foot on the block, kickstand it down, Step your back, step your left foot back a little bit if you need to, and then bend both knees slightly and then bend your chest over. Hands can come on the block, using that as a bit of leverage to help you really open the back of the leg. Keep breathing. You can roll the shoulders down and back. and just listen to your breath. Feel how this opens up the calf, then goes up the leg and opens up the hamstring and maybe part of the butt. It's all connected and it all affects one another. Great. Put your hands on your hips, lift yourself up, let that block come down, give yourself a shake and then grab through your block again. So we're gonna put the block in between our thighs and you can do this with the book as long as there's nothing like super sharp that will hurt you, but I'm gonna do it on this way. So I'm facing my, the short side of my block towards you and I'm gonna place that in between my thighs. Cool. Then I'm gonna find my feet at hips with distance. You can still do this facing at the back of your mat. Find a slight bend in your knees and just notice what it's like when you have something in between your legs that you have to hold together. 
So your legs are a little bit more engaged. You're standing up super tall, shoulders back and down, arms can be down by your sides or on your hips. I just like holding my hips, I guess. And feel free to close your eyes here and rock a little bit forward and back and side to side and find the midpoint of your feet. Cool. From there, you're gonna inhale, sweep your arms up, press your palms together overhead and exhale forward fold over your legs, keeping the block there, you can do it. Find that slight bend in your knees, forward fold. Let it just hang over. And then begin to walk your hands out into a downward facing dog. Great, so bend your knees, stick your butt up, keep the block in between your legs. If it falls, pick it back up. On your next inhale, bring your body forward and through to a plank pose, keep the block there. Exhale, bend the knees, stick the butt up, downward facing dog. On your next inhale, bring the body forward and through, upward facing dog, keep the toes tucked. Legs have to be engaged to hold the block and then bend the knees, stick the butt up, downward facing dog. Cool, one more cycle of breath here in your down dog. And then place the knees down, remove the block. Notice how your legs feel, shake anything, adjust yourself, and then come back into your all fours position. Cool, from here, once again, place your forearms down. Then you're gonna tuck your toes and lift your knees and come into a forearm dog. Great, you can walk your feet in a little bit. Still have a bend in your knees. Imagine that your hands are pressing that block together so your elbows stay parallel to one another. Bend the knees, stick the butt up, arch your back. One more breath. And then pressing into your palms, come back into your normal downward facing dog. Cool. Find your normal down dog. As you inhale, lift your right leg up, down dog split. Exhale, bring your right foot to your right thumb. From here, stay on your fingertips or you can have your hands on blocks and just take circles around your hips, not yet letting your back knee come down to the ground. Cool. So take some circles to the right, take some circles to the left. Then place your back knee down, untuck the back toes. And we've done this before, but really try to find the connection of your armpit into your knee, doing a Rosie the Riveter type movement. And then just take some circles to the right and the left with your armpit on your knee. We like to think of our armpits as the windows to the lungs. And we wanna keep our windows clean. So this kind of flushes any excess lymph or inflammation or anything that's building up in our armpits out and allows us to have cleaner windows, better access to the lungs. Great. Place your hand back down on the ground or a block and then lifting your right toes up, begin to straighten the right leg and come into your runner stretch. From here, inhale, lengthen out the spine. Exhale, let yourself forward fold over your legs. You can sway from side to side. Your leg doesn't need to be completely straight. Totally fine if it's a little bit bent. And then take some rocks with your leg to the right and left. So turning your toes in, turning your toes out to get all parts of the hamstring. A few more breaths here. Notice what your jaw is doing. Great. And then place the right foot back down, come back into your low lunge. You can place the blocks a bit in front of you. Come onto your fingertips, find your Anjaneyasana. Inhale, reach your arms forward, out and up, coming into Anjaneyasana with your torso up. Pressing down with your hips, right knee is still on top of right ankle. And then you can take any arm variation that you want here, either opposite elbow, interlace your hands behind your neck and let your head fall, or interlace your hands at the base of your spine and pull your shoulders back, whatever feels good. Three more breaths.
And then after your third breath, you'll lift your arms back up. This time, place both hands on the inside of your right foot. So to the left of your right foot. Heel toe your right foot out to the left. We're coming into lizard pose. So right foot is on a 45 degree angle, toes on the floor, heel still on your mat. And then take again circles to the right and left, opening up the hips like this. Cool. You can come onto fingertips or blocks again here if you have them. And then place your hands back down. And then you can take any variation of lizard that you want. You can come forearms to the ground. You can come to forearms on blocks. And just find yourself there for a few breaths. You can also tuck the back toe and lift the back knee if that is something that you wanna do. I like leaving my knee down because I get a bit more of an opening in the front of my left thigh. Noticing what your spine is doing. Try to keep your back a little bit arched, shoulders down away from the ears and you're looking down and out in front of you instead of rounding into your belly. One more breath. And then place your hands back underneath your shoulders and come up. One more thing here in Lizard. If you want, you can place a block underneath your left hand, place your right hand on your right knee, and then twist yourself up and open to the right. Once again, opening up the chest. On your next inhale, option to just lift your right arm up or keep it going and then kick your left foot into your butt and grab for your left foot, creating the circuit but feel free to just either keep your right hand on your right knee and just twist your chest up as much as you can. Whatever feels good. On your next inhale, place your right hand back down, remove the block, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, hug your right knee into your nose. Cool, one more ab thing here. And then place your right knee behind your right wrist. We're not going into pigeon, swing your left leg all the way around, come into double pigeon. So left knee comes on top of right, or left ankle comes on top of right knee, left knee on top of right ankle. If this is like, I'm not doing this, just cross your left shin in front of your right. Cool. From there, if you wanna just stay seated because you feel this a lot in your hips, feel free. Otherwise, you can walk your hands forward. You can grab a block on any height and let your head rest on it. Or one of my favorite things to do is to place them on the highest height a bit further out in front of me. Grab for opposite elbows overhead and then let that come up and over and rest your elbows on the blocks. But if that is not in your practice right now, that's totally fine. A few more breaths here, opening up the hips. Letting your head relax, jaw relax, face relax. And then come back up to sit up tall. Let your arms come down by your sides if they aren't already. Lift your feet up. Come into Navasana for a hot second. And then once again, cross your left chin over your right, step it back, downward facing dog. Feel free to move the blocks out of your way if you need. On your next inhale, bring your body forward and through to upward facing dog. Imagine you have the block in between your legs. Exhale, bend the knees, downward facing dog. Take one more in your own breath if you want. Inhaling and exhaling. And then begin to walk your feet up to the front of your mat, coming into a forward fold at the front of your mat. Great. From here, just let your arms dangle for a second. Find your weight on two feet. And then interlace your hands at the base of your spine again. And then interlace them the weird way. Then let this arm structure hang over your head. 
It might open up the shoulders in a different way. Keep breathing. Notice where the weight is in your feet. Notice how your lungs are feeling. Notice how your body is connecting with your mind and your breath. Finding and keeping that connection and communication. Feel free to close your eyes. And then exhale, bring your hands back to your low back. Let your arms just dangle down, place your palms down on the ground and begin to walk your feet back to a downward facing dog. Inhale, bring your body forward and through up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. One breath, wall meet. On your next inhale, lift your left leg up. Down dog split. Exhale, bring your left foot to your left thumb. Once again, take circles with the knee off the ground. Whatever feels good. Notice where you're looking with your head. Try not to look down and behind you. Then place your back knee down. Untuck the toes and rosy the riveter, your armpit over your knee, taking circles with your armpit right and left, clearing out all that gunk that has built up there. And this is a very weird thing to do. So if you're like, what's going on? I have that thought a lot of times when I'm doing Katona yoga stuff. <laughs> but it's good for you. Great. Place your left hand down. And then on your next inhale, lift your arms forward, out and up, Anjaneyasana. Great. And then if you took an arm variation on the other side, either switch the interlacing or in the case of the opposite elbow, switch which elbows is on top. Just to try the non-habitual side. Always good to try to get out of our habits and try something new. Notice where your knee is going. Make sure it's tracking over your toes. Keep breathing, letting the hips fall. Imagine that your hips are going down. That lifts your chest up. Exhale, bring your arms up, lift up super tall. Place your hands down to frame your front foot. Same thing as we did on the other side. Hands can be on blocks or on fingertips. Begin to straighten your left leg. Toes lift up. And then come into your runner stretch. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold over your leg. And then you can take some sways, turning your left foot internal and externally. Or feel free to just find stillness in one spot and linger there. Keep breathing. Relaxing any part of the body that isn't really in use right now. Well, everything is in use, but we're really focusing on the left hamstring and the left butt. So relax your shoulders, relax your face. Exhale, come back to press your left foot down. Tuck your back toes, if you need to. Place your left hand on the inside of your left foot and then heel toe your left foot out over to the left. So coming into lizard on this side, we didn't need to tuck our back toes, but never hurts to tuck a toe. So come to circles here on this side, taking circles to the left, taking circles to the right. Hands can be on blocks, on your palms or on fingertips, whatever feels good. So many variations when you have props. And then come to a bit of stillness. Whatever variation of lizard that you took on the other side, try to take the same thing on this side so you can find a bit of symmetry between the right and left sides. 
while neither side will ever be symmetrical fully with the other, it's nice to try. So notice if this side is a little bit more tight and if you have to come out of it a little bit more, feel free. Notice what your back is doing. You can look at your left knee and make sure that your left knee is tracking over the left toes. A few more breaths. Opening up the legs, creating more space, more space to breathe. And then place your hands back down. Feel free to grab a block and place it underneath your right hand. Place your left hand on your left knee and twist yourself up and open to the left. We'll all take a moment here and then lift your left arm up Shoulder comes down away from the ear, twisting up and over to the left. And if you can keep going, feel free, kick your right foot to your right butt and grab for your right foot. Still keeping the shoulders down, pressing the butt down, using your foot and your hand to bring your foot towards your butt. Or if your hand is still on your knee, that's perfect too. So any variation that feels good. One more breath, pressing down to lift up. And then place your left hand back down, move the block. Now we tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, and then hug your left knee in towards your nose. One breath here, place your left knee down behind your left wrist. Spin your right leg around and come into double pigeon on this side, ankle to knee. Right foot on top of left knee, right knee on top of left foot. And what same thing here, if you just sat up on the other side, sit up on this side, or you can take the opposite variation of whatever you did on the other side. So if you took that opposite elbow grab thing on the high blocks, feel free to do that opposite elbow, then the opposite, opposite elbow. Or if you just walked your hands a little bit forward, that's perfect. Deepening the breath as much as we can. Finding these moments of stillness to focus on how you're breathing. Notice the volume and the depth and the speed. Really focusing on the lungs today. On your next inhale, lift yourself up. Place your hands back down. Bring your legs forward to tabletop Navasana. And then cross your right ankle over your left and come back into your down dog. Move any blocks you need to. On your next inhale, bring your body forward and through upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. One more time, engaging the legs, upward facing dog and downward facing dog. Cool. And then on your next inhale, begin to walk your hands back, coming into a forward fold at the back of your mat. From there, you're just gonna immediately roll up, find a bend in your knees and roll yourself up. Head is last to lift. Cool. So we're at the tops of our mats or the back of our mats and we're gonna grab for our blanket. Try to have it in this rectangular shape. And then from there, you're gonna roll it up like a burrito, which I think all of us have done before. And then you're gonna place that honestly anywhere on your mat, but we'll come to the backs of our mats. From there, you're gonna place the heels on the blanket, toes on the ground, feet at hips width distance, Find a slight bend in the knees and then just roll yourself down over your legs. From there, any variation with the arms. Maybe let's all just grab for opposite elbow just to all be in sync. It's nice to have options, but it's also nice to have boundaries and also to be told what to do sometimes. So coming into opposite elbow grab here, feel free to bring your eyes to a close. 
and see if you can imagine your knees making contact with your armpits. So we're once again fighting for that connection and trying to find it like we did in our low lunge. One more breath. And then we're gonna try something different. So keep bending your knees and then keeping your back long, chest is open, keeping your opposite elbows grabbed. You're gonna come into a flat back. Your knees are still bent. So we're kind of coming through a chair pose here and then keeping your knees as bent as they can, just lift your upper body up. Ooh, one more breath here like this. And then straighten the legs, lift your arms up and back and then let them come down, roll it out. From here, we'll switch it up. So to ball to the feet, toes are on the blanket, heels are on the mat. And then let's just come down the way we came in or the way we just got here. So grab the opposite elbows, grab for the opposite one, bend your knees. Ooh, I really feel this in my calves. And then keeping your knees bent like you're in that chair pose, just move your upper body and bring it parallel to the ground. So we're now we're in this, we call this a Katona chair. One more breath here, keeping the knees bent, finding the connection of the belly to the thighs, and then let that go forward fold, keeping the Opposite elbow grab, feel free to take a sway. Noticing how the back of your legs feel. Closing your eyes, wiggling your toes a bit. A few more breaths. And then let your arms just dangling go. And once again, slowly roll yourself up. Cool. From there, shake it out. Just roll yourself out. Feel free to keep the blanket like that. We might use it again later. And then find yourself at the back of your mat. Standing on two feet, come to Tadasana, palms facing forward, slight bend in your knees, close your eyes. Chin is level to the ground. Energy is shooting down through all corners of the feet and shooting up through the crown of the head. Embracing the qualities of fall, using our lungs to breathe, listening to our bodies, what's around us, listening to our minds, listening to our breath to help us communicate internally and externally. And on your next inhale, Lift your arms up, press your palms together overhead and exhale forward, fold over your legs. Great, walk yourself back out to your downward facing dog. From here, inhale your body forward and through, upward facing dog, toes tucked, engage the legs. Bend the knees, stick the butt up, downward facing dog. Great, on your next inhale, come forward and through to a plank pose. Find your plank pose here, shoulders over wrists, and we'll take a down down to get to where we need to go. So place your left forearm down and your right forearm down. So we're back in our forearm plank, yay. On your next inhale, you're just gonna let your hips lower and bring yourself into Sphinx pose. Untuck your toes, elbows are right underneath your shoulders for you to adjust as you need. And then imagine that you're pulling your hands back and creating space for your chest to move through the frame of your shoulders. Strongly pressing down with the tops of the feet. One more breath here. And then let that go. Palm pillow underneath your forehead. And then just shake your hips from side to side, release your low back. Great. Okay, so if you have guessed what we're doing next or what we were building up to, I will ask you afterwards and we can trust, I'll trust that you guessed it, but we're gonna come into a shoulder stand practice. Um, know that you can stop along the way, similar to headstand. Um, I'm gonna come up against a wall just because I don't, I definitely don't feel safe doing this in the center of a room because I can't do it yet and that's, great. There's always something to improve upon. And that is what 
life is all about, it's all about learning. So I'm gonna bring my mat to come flush up against the wall with like my shorter side. So I would find some wall space, probably not on a window because you don't wanna break any glass here. So find some wall space. And then from there, I'll just do this facing you so you can see me. I'm gonna grab one of my blocks and I'm gonna find my block on its lowest height, really close to the wall, like probably like six-ish inches or like maybe that's like 10, 12, 15 centimeters for my European friends. And then I'm gonna make an L shape with my hands coming onto the block. Oh, so you can't really see this, but great. So my hands are like that on the block. Then I'm gonna bring my forearms down to the ground and then tuck my toes behind me and come into that down dog, uh, forearm down dog shape that we did earlier. And it's really important to keep the elbows in like we did in the beginning. We wanna keep them at that 90 degree angle. And you can almost think of trying to keep them even more in because they have the tendency to flare out. And then from there, you're gonna tuck your toes. So I'm kind of in this like, I don't know what this is called, a little ready to pounce thing. I'm gonna tuck my toes and lift my hips. So you're more than welcome to just stay here and stay in this like dolphin forearm dog pose. Or you can walk your feet more closely in towards your chest and then lift your right leg up and then just start taking hops. So hopping up, lifting your left leg up a little bit. And this is a perfect place to be. Take like a few hops on this side and then come into a child's pose for a little bit. And then you can do the other side. I'll let you know when to switch. Or if you're like, Dana, I've done this pose since I was seven, then like you can come up to the wall and just like, or even in space and just lift your left leg up. And so it meets your right leg and then just hold it for as long as you can. I'll just show you what I try to do, which is nothing perfect because nobody's perfect. A great song by Hannah Montana. So I'm gonna come into this. My block is close enough to the wall. I'm gonna walk my feet in. Then I'm gonna kiss my legs up to the wall. Cool. So I'm really thinking about my elbows coming in. So I want them to be parallel. My feet are engaged. So if I really wanted to, I could like lift off the wall for a hot second and then come back. Cool. If you've just done hops on one side, switch to the other side. It's always good to try both sides. And even if you just do hops, that's also great. It all starts with the hop. So just be careful. Um, you don't wanna injure yourself. So even if you do stay in the dolphin pose, that's also perfect. Cool, I'm just gonna try the other side to even it out. Oops, I can't do this side. Oh, well. Cool. So take a few more breaths and then we'll all meet in a child's pose. Widen your hands as wide as the mat, widen your knees as wide as the mat, and then face your palms up just to give your shoulders a little bit of a break. I know we kind of did that for a while because I explained for a long time, but now we can rest and do some breath work. Cool, so stay in your child's pose. Keep breathing, let the breath settle. And when I send out the recording, feel free to just rewatch those steps again and try it again on your own if you want. Definitely recommend by a wall, not near anything breakable or painful. <laughs> so, and if that's your first time doing it, yay, great job. Cool, okay. Bring yourself up to come onto your shins. We can stay at the wall with our mats because the wall is a very good tool for a lot of things to do and practice, but if you wanna move yourself, feel free. 
from here, we're just gonna come to sit up tall and we're gonna do a little bit of breath work before we move into our final resting pose, just cause I wanna give us a little moment of really clearing out the lungs. So you can either sit in Virasana with a block in between your heels, or you can fold up your blanket and then sit on it um, cross-legged. Wow, I just fell, yay. Okay, so whatever feels more comfortable to you, and then from here, we're gonna do a little bit of a fun bestrika breath. So I think we've done this before and we like to do bestrika breaths with um, like different movements of our spines. I think one week we did it this way, but one that I really like to do because it really opens up the shoulders is when we inhale like this and then exhale, we open out. So you can kind of think like you're on a dance floor, but you don't have to think like that. Maybe I just wanna go party, but we're gonna take an inhale, you're gonna take inhales and exhales through your nose to really clean out the lungs and cleanse the breath and just let it move through you. So we can start with our hands and fists in front of us. Inhale through the nose and just take a normal breath, inhaling through the nose and exhaling out the mouth to start at neutral. And then as you inhale through the nose, you'll arch your spine and then exhale round. And you can take this at whatever speed you want, whatever breath you can go. Also, like I said, oh my gosh, I should stop talking on the beat, but I can't. Um, you can take whatever movement you want with the arm. Like if you're like, I wanna go like this or something, just take whatever movement that helps you open up your shoulders. Feel free to close your eyes. No one is watching you. Just focus on your inhales and exhales through the nose. Great. And we'll take this for a few more. So count to 50. If you want to go to 50 faster, count faster, breathe faster, or go as slow as you need. And just keep breathing, knowing that you're opening the lungs. The nose is the sense associated with fall, which makes sense you breathe a lot through your nose, which is associated with the lungs. So just know that you're helping your lungs as you keep breathing in and out through your nose, focusing on how it's all connected, what your body is doing, how your shoulders feel, how your head feels. And after you've done your 50, we'll lift your arms up tall, hook your thumbs together, inhaling through the nose. Take three more sips through the mouth. Hold it at the top and then exhale like you popped a champagne bottle. Let your arms just fall to the side. Place some palms facing up on your thighs. And notice how your body feels. Notice how your nose feels. Notice if you feel a little bit more woken up, a little bit more shook up. And just let it all settle down. Like there was a big gust of wind and now all of the leaves are just falling and settling down onto the grass. Palms are face up to accept all of the grace as a result of our efforts. Eyes are closed. Fall is the season leading up to winter where we go inward, we spend more time inside, a little bit more introspective. So we start feeling those things in fall as well. Keep breathing. We only have a few more minutes left, so you might go a little bit over. If you have somewhere to be, just feel free to leave, whatever. But I do want to give us one final resting pose on our back, which can be of your choice. Since our mats are at the wall, you can take a legs up the wall or you can come into normal Shavasana. Two options today. Or if you're like, I don't want to do either of those things, feel free to do whatever you want. We are all free here. Um, so I'm going to take my blanket and fold it and place it up against the wall. Then I'm gonna to come to sit on either side 
of my blanket as if I'm just like hanging out at a party. And then I'm gonna roll over onto whichever side. So I'm facing the right side of the wall. I'm gonna roll onto my right side. Oops. And then press my hips up against the wall. Letting my legs come up the wall. Great. And you can rock your knees a little bit side to side, shimmy your way into comfort. Or if you want to, you can just come into a normal Shavasana, maybe even rolling up the blanket and putting it underneath your knees. That always helps release the low back. And arms can be anywhere. They can be down by your sides. They can be up in like goal posts by your ears, which really helps open the shoulders and give you more space for the lungs. And then relax your feet. Relax your ankles. Relax your calves, shins, knees. Feel free to take any wiggles that you need to help you release the tension. Relaxing into your hamstrings. Closing your eyes. Relaxing into your hips and your butt, your low belly your chest and your lungs. Thanking them for all the work they do to help us breathe in and out. Inhaling what we need, exhaling what we don't, literally and figuratively. Relaxing into the shoulders and the armpits, the windows to the lungs. Relaxing into the upper arms, the elbows, the forearms, wrists, and hands. Relaxing into your neck and your tongue, relaxing the whole face. Keep breathing. Let it all settle down. Let it all fall down. Let you lie there. Embrace all of the grace that came from the effort you put in today. Thank you to your lungs for all the work they do. Imagining the metal element and what it means and what that means for your body and your life, how you can take some of those metaphors and use them on and off the mat. Fall is also this season after we've had a ton of energy and we've planted things in spring and let them grow in summer and late summer. Now everything has bloomed and blossomed. And in fall, we get to reap the benefits and embrace all of the efforts that we do. So in life, this could be a metaphor for putting in a lot of work to a project and then embracing the accomplishment once it's all over. And I know I, always forget that step. I just kind of skip it and keep moving on to whatever's next, but it's a very important step to notice and embrace and celebrate all of the accomplishments that we have every single day. So take a little bit of fall with you into your mindset as you're working, shopping, watching TV, cooking, being grateful and happy about the output. Begin to bring some wiggles and movements back into your legs. Take some movements with your upper arms, your fingers, your wrists. And then if your legs are up the wall, you're gonna place your feet on the wall, bend your knees in towards your chest and roll your body off to either side. 
if you're in Shavasana, just come into a fetal position. Keeping your eyes closed. Place your right hand down on the earth, whichever hand is the top hand down and up, and press yourself up to sit and come into any sort of comfortable seat that feels nice. Eyes can stay closed. Hands come face up on your knees, shoulders roll down and back, gently pressing your chest forward, allowing your lungs to be the star of the show today. Take one more deep inhale through the nose and exhale it out the mouth. Pressing our palms together at the center of your chest. Gratitude to yourselves for being here, to everyone else being here, doing it in spirit virtually. Namaste. Great. Sorry, we went a few minutes over, but we always love a good rest at the end. So I wanted it, so we did it. <laughs> um,